Now we have our three squares, three of the come together squares, and we are ready to make the purse. So we're going to kind of give all of these labels. We're going to call the square with the gray edge on it, square A, and we're going to call the gray yarn, yarn A. We are going to call the square with the yellow edge on it, square B, and we are going to call the yellow yarn, yarn B. We're going to call the pink square, square C, and we do not need another yarn. So there are our labels. Now the way this purse will look, this little bag is going to have square C in a triangle on the bottom, square B in a triangle on one side, and square A in a triangle on the other side. So let's start joining them. Our first join, we need to do a flat join with square A and square C these two sides together and then these two sides together. So it'll actually join here and here, but we want a flat join, not a, nothing that kind of holds them folded like this. We want them to lay together flat and you'll see why later. So to make that flat join, we are going to start with color A. With color A, going to get a slip knot on our hook and go ahead and leave yourself a nice long tail so that you can weave in or do whatever you may need to do later. Now what we're going to do is slip stitch into the chain two corner of square A, okay, and then slip stitch into the chain two corner of square C. Now you want to go ahead and keep your working yarn running off in the same direction that you're crocheting in. And now we're just going to bounce back and forth between square A and square C, slip stitching into the next available stitch. So now I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch of square A. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch of square C next stitch of square A. Whoop, don't want to split my yarn. Next stitch of square C. It's, it's a little fiddly doing this and sometimes it's easier if you're just kind of sitting and doing it on your lap and adjusting how it works best for you. But since I'm on camera here and trying to make sure you can see what I'm doing, it might be a little fiddly. So let's scoot this over so we're closer to the center and even maybe zoom in a little bit. So slip stitch in the next stitch of square A, slip stitch in the next stitch of square C. And keep doing that. You're not skipping any stitches, okay? Do not skip any stitches. Just slip stitch in the next stitch of square A, slip stitch in the next stitch of square B. Oops. And keep on doing that all the way until you get to that chain two corner and then we'll talk about what to do there. So I slip stitched in my last single crochet on this side of square A and the last single crochet on this side of square C. So now I'm going to slip stitch into the chain two corner of square A, slip stitch into the chain two corner of square C, and then do that again, slip stitch into the chain two corner of square A, slip stitch into the chain two corner of square C, and now I'm going to continue joining around along the next side. So I'm going to slip stitch into the first stitch of square A. There we go. And the first um single crochet of this side of square A and slip stitch into the first single crochet of this side of square C and then slip stitch into the next single crochet on square A, slip stitch into the next single crochet on square C and keep going again 
all the way across this side of both of these squares until we get to those chain two corners. I'm slip stitching into the last stitch on this side of square A, and now I'm slip stitching into the last stitch on this side of square C. Now I'm going to slip stitch into the square A chain two corner, and then slip stitch into the square C chain two corner. And then what I'm going to do is pull that loop up a little bit and toss it onto a stitch marker just to hold that because I am going to want to come back to this yarn and I don't want to have it cut. So that stitch marker will just hold it so it doesn't disappear. And now you see why it needed to lay flat because this is actually the way that our um, purse needs to lay out. Now we want to join our square upside down. No, we want to join it right side up. Now we want to join square B. And to do that, we are going to use yarn color B. And we're basically doing the same thing. So here is the corner where we ended joining squares A and C. I'm going to go ahead and put yarn B, a slip knot, on our hook, leaving a nice long tail for weaving in or whatever later. All right, slip knot into one of the chain two corners of square B. Slip stitch into one of the chain two corners of square B. And now slip stitch into that same chain two corner on square C where we just ended joining with square A. Okay, so we're going to slip stitch into that same chain two corner. Okay, and now we're going to join these next two sides of both square C and square B in the same manner as we just did with squares A and C. I'm going to slip stitch into the first stitch, the first single crochet of square B, then slip stitch into the first single crochet on this side of square C, and then slip stitch into the next st stitch on square A. I'm sorry, square B. Got used to saying it. Slip stitch into the next stitch on square C. Slip stitch into the next stitch on square B. Slip stitch into the next stitch on square C. Keep going to the corner and I'm going to do this exactly the same way. So when I get to the corner, I will slip stitch into the chain two corner of square B, then into the chain two corner of square C, then into the chain two corner of square B again, into the chain two corner of square C again, and then I'll continue the other row, the other sides, I mean, all the way to the next chain two corner where I'll slip stitch once into square B chain two corner, once into square C chain two corner, and then hold on to my yarn with a slip stitch with a stitch marker again and we will come back and continue making our sides our straps at that point I've slip stitched into the last um, single crochet on square C now I'm slip stitching into the chain two space of square A and then I'm going to go ahead and find my scissors, <laughs> clip my yarn, and just pull that through. And now I can weave that in later, but for now I'm going to go ahead and turn this over and get my color A yarn back on my hook. So let's see. I, can, I obviously gave that a little pull at some point while I was working, there we go. So now what I'm going to do is single crochet into each of these 39 single crochet along this side of square B. So here's the side of square B. There are 39 single crochet here because that was the last row that we made, the last round that we made on this square. And I'm going to single crochet into each one of those. So we'll do our 39 single crochet and then we'll come on back. 39. Now I'm going to single crochet into this chain two space. And then I'm going to chain 25, not too tight. One, two, 
24, 25. So there you go. They're not really loose, but I just was conscious not to pull them tight. Now, making sure you're not twisting this chain, you want to go ahead and just slip stitch into the chain two space that has not been morphed into from square A. Just go ahead and slip stitch right in there. Oopsie, without losing your yarn. And then just kind of give your whole piece a little bit of a twist here so you can uh, have this chain in front of you. What I'm going to do now is single crochet into the bottom bump of each of these 25 chains, okay? Here are the top two loops, but I want to leave those available. So I'm single crocheting into the bottom bumps of each of these 25 stitches. Now, what I'm going to, going to do first is give myself just another chain one, just to kind of get up to height, and then single crochet into each of those 25 chains in the bottom bump. One, 24, and 25. Now I'm going to single crochet once more into this chain two corner of color of square B, and then single crochet into each of the 39 single crochet along this side of square B. Okay, and now I'm going to slip stitch into this chain two space here, but I'm also changing my color back to color B so I'm going to do the slip stitch with color B. All right, and then just kind of pull that. There we go. Now I'm going to chain one. I'm going to skip this first single crochet and single crochet into the next one. And keep on going so that I have a total of 38 single crochet. So this was my first one, that was number one. I'm gonna keep on going till I have 38. So this is 2, 3, 38. And now I'm going to single crochet two together and that's going to be the last stitch on this side of the square and then the first single crochet on this strap. Those are the two stitches I am single crocheting two together. Now we are going to single crochet along the next 23 stitches of this strap. And 23. And now we are going to single crochet two together again. One and two. Now single crochet 38. One and 38. And now I'm going to take color A, all right? And um, you can now cut color B. I did already because this is take two. <laughs> so clip color B. And now go ahead and slip stitch into the loop, into your first single crochet. So you see, here's my first single crochet. There's that little loop coming out of it. That's where I wanna place that single crochet, that slip stitch, I mean. All right, so slip stitch into there, pull your little color B tail tight, chain one, and then go ahead and single crochet into each of the next 36 stitches. So not the one we just worked in, but each of the next 36. One, two, 36. Now single crochet two together. Now single crochet 22. 22, single crochet two together. You can see both of our single crochet two togethers are right on top of the previous one. So if you think some of the math sounds a little wonky, that's what I'm doing in order to keep these lined up. Now single crochet in each of the next 36 stitches. 36. And then cut your yarn, pull that through. Now we're going to make one of those duplicate stitches again. All right, so I've got my yarn on my needle and I'm gonna go ahead and just run my needle underneath this 
set of loops right here. Pull that nice and tight. And then come back down through the center of this stitch and both of those loops. Okay. Oopsie. Try not to let it get too loose. There we go. And then kind of flip this around so I can work, work it properly. I'm just going to weave in this end and then go ahead and weave in all the other ends on this side. All right, weave in all these ends right here. And then we're going to come back and work around this side, another round of yellow and another round of gray so that it matches. When I'm weaving in these ends, what I also want to do is you can see how this end came from this side, this end came from this side, this end came from this side. I'm actually going to cross them over when I weave them in and that will help give me a more solid look. I won't see a bunch of little holes there where it looks like I've joined all my rounds because there are some decreases in there. So you just want to kind of cross over your ends when you're weaving them in just to, you know, help seal things up a little bit and give your finished product a more professional look. So to get this round started, I'm going to insert my hook in the loop, underneath the loop coming out of that first single crochet. So here is the first single crochet in color A, and I'm going to insert my hook right after that, and just pull up a loop of color B. There we go, pull up a loop of color B and make a chain. Okay, so I have basically slip stitched into, into there and made a chain. And now I'm going to go ahead and single crochet starting in the next stitch. I'm going to single crochet 38. So here is one, two, and now we keep on going. You single crochet your 38 and you keep following this round the same way we did this yellow, the yellow round over here. And then we're going to do the gray round the same way we did the gray round over here. And then weave in all of your ends and then either your bag is done or your bag is ready for a lining, depending on if you want to put a lining in it or not. 